Let's call the meeting to order for May 22nd, 2013. We're being taped by the North Street Neighborhood Association. And my name is, Ter I mean, Greg Rogers, not Terry Cohen. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Craig. Yes. Uh, first, for your approval, the minutes of the April 24th board meeting. Move approval. Second. Second. Any comments or changes? Provided a few comments. Thank you. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Now, the minutes from the May 8th BPW meeting. Move approval. Second. Similarly. Similarly. Uh, adjusted. Great. All in favor of approving those minutes? Aye. 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 <coughs> okay. Um, as everyone knows, uh, last Saturday we went and looked at six more private ways. Um, pardon? Are we going to do public comment Ooh, before good, we get started? Good point. Um, the new open meeting law and the changes we've been trying to make across the city to give everyone a chance to say something if they have something on their mind um, has prompted us to have a public comment period before our meeting. It's kind of new and I have to admit I forgot. Would anyone like to speak to the board as a group? <clears throat> okay. First, uh, for your for discussion, is Pocket Avenue. They're all here for private ways. Do you want to know which one? Pine Valley Road. Pine Valley Road. Pine Valley Road. It's all Pine Valley Road. They're all here. Yeah. <laughs> Do we want to move that one to the top? Sure. Sure. <laughs> All right. We have a motion to move Pine Valley Road uh, to the next. I make a motion. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Pine Valley Road. <laughs> Ned, do you want to uh, share sure. us the staff's thoughts on that? Sure. I can do that. I think I can. Um, the Pine Valley Road, as most people know, is not where people travel it now. It's actually a couple doors down. And it's, a, it's an easement that was granted for passively passive individuals. I don't know if you remember going out to the end of Pine Valley Road as we walked it. You can see down through the woods and the neighbors. I believe that's the old way that was used years ago. So the way that's used now on Pine Valley Road is where the city has taken a water and sewer easement. Um, and that's what's commonly known as Pine Valley Road right now. It's a 30-foot wide easement for sewer and water. And that's the one we're considering. We're ignoring the other that's one. That's correct. That is what we're considering. That's what we currently plow is that particular easement. So that goes up past the uh, yard with all of the accessories and then curves around to the left. That's correct. And winds up against the hillside. Right. What I don't know is uh, right now is the relation of where our easement ends and the end of where we plow the turnaround at the last house out there. I don't think the easement goes the complete length, but that's something that the surveyor will pick up as we look at if we decide to make this a public way. The surveyor will pick up these features and we'll come up with a recommendation of where we think Pine Valley Road should end. Chris? Well, I, I, would, I would recommend that we offer that we recommend, I would re I would suggest that we recommend the full, beyond the easement to the, to the actual usable end of the road. Um, but I actually now have a question because um, when was that easement taken on the water and sewer? The water was done in 1950-something and the sewer was done in 1984. Okay, all right. Well, the 1950, because I, I recall from our discussion on Saturday, this is one of those property, uh, this is one of those streets where there appeared to have been some movement in the 1960s that then dropped off. That's correct. So, but so w at least one of the easements would have occurred before that. The water easement had okay. occurred before. All right. My concern was that 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 uh, um, the initial work had been done on the old, as opposed to what's currently in use. But it sounds like it would have been what's currently. That in use. wasn't clear on the board's record in right. 1960 which Pine Valley Way they were looking at. Okay. So then we can, if we wish, assume that it's the one that's currently with that currently holds the easement. Sure makes you feel better. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm trying to find a way to get this. I'm trying to find a way to get this one in, and uh, so that's what I, that's what I'm. I'm glad. We, I'm glad we can't automatically assume it was the old the old route. So thank you. Very much. 
So you're thinking though, uh, who's if you go all the way around to the left. There's, uh, right at the end, there's a house on the right, kind of a tan that house, does. and then there's one behind you. Is that also your house? Yes. So. It's my I, understanding that road that goes to the end used to belong to the lady, Delio, was that her name? Mm -hmm. Delio. So it's not actually my road. It's, it's a road that continues, that just comes right and goes to the end. They used to plow it all the way down to the end, from what I've been told from the neighbors. But then when the Roberts lived there, Pat Roberts used to complain and tell them to stay the heck off of that because he had it gray because he was going to have a black top or something to that nature. Mm -hmm. But uh, from my understanding, that road continues right to the end. It would be nice if it was. I mean, if you're going to come in that far, why not just a little bit more? But that's your choice. Because they always stopped at the house, at the end of the house, before ours. So that last stretch in front of the house never got plowed. They did they when followed. I called up there one time. Yeah, but yeah. then you called twice after that and they never but did That's it. not the issue, really, though, my name. Okay. Uh, any other comments on... Valley? There was also that little leg called the extension Pine off to the right going to the three houses. Yes. And are we considering that as part of this geography? It's open for discussion. Do we have a motion on the table? Not yet. Uh, I, I know I went there a long time ago. I didn't go there this time. And I <clears throat> looked at the Google Earth map and compared it with the zoning map and it what I think I'm looking at, I, I can see where the old Pine Valley Road was on the right. on the city uh, zoning map. It looks like where it is now crosses three parcels. At that least. Sound right? Yeah. Okay, could it yeah. this this is the extension we're talking about. It the road actually circles around and ends up here. So it's so not this. Open. No. We, we put in a, a sewer mm -hmm. right. uh, some years ago, and people started driving. And once they compacted it and, re and backfilled it, people started using that as a shortcut, mm -hmm. and it became the street. Okay. So that would be uh, probably along this line right here. So across one, two, possibly three, maybe right. four, if you went this way. So, uh, so we're talking about this. This and he was just talking about his house is here, and then there's a house behind him, and he owns both of these. And the, the road appears to just die against this hillside. So that's uh, this is mostly just following the old sewer line. The original one is over here, and see, yeah, yeah, that's what it shows. Yeah, you sort of see the curve in the road here, and I think it's where that. And then this extension is uh, for the three houses. The proposal you have on the table benefits everybody here to come in that way, where your water comes in and everything, rather than the old, original Pine Valley Road. Because it's closed off, it's all filled with trees, the access, and it doesn't benefit everybody else. It benefits me, maybe, but I'm with these people where right. we would like to come in the main drag where you're considering now. It's more beneficial. Okay. Mike? Yeah. Mike? Um, so, at least to me, this is one of those challenging private ways that falls in the middle. And if you look at the criteria that we've been using as a general guide, it, it doesn't fare too well. Um, but yet, as you stand out there and you look at the houses and the needs of the neighborhood, um, it, it seems to me that we ought to we ought to, it would be nice if we could find a way to um, approve it, but um, it does, it makes it a challenge to be consistent with some of our previous decisions. Right. The right of way is 30 feet. And it, yeah, I, my recollection is vehicles can pass going opposite direction and stay in there. And I think that's, you know, that's a probably a more important criteria than some of the others. There, there are 12 mailboxes. I presume that means there are 12 residences there, which is more There are than some people on Burt's Pit Road that also, on Burt's Pit Road extension, that have their mailboxes in the mm -hmm. same yeah. place ours are located. The first house right before and before or after our road is one of the houses that has that as a mailbox. Yeah. Everyone else is further down, has their own mailbox on the side. I think the point I was making is there, there are a relatively large number of 
houses or residences yes. on this street compared to some of these homes, two, three, and four? That's right. That's right. That was my question. Do we have a number? Do we know how many houses? It said 12 on, on the list. Okay. Um, Mike, I, I was struggling just because the, as you compare it to some of the other ones that we've denied already, and some of the, you know, even though, you know, Center Court and Park Avenue all have, you know, 12 units, 12 households living there, we chose not to support them. If, um... It might, it might be timely to bring this up. I was thinking of doing it later. <coughs> um, I was talking to Mike the other day, and, you know, by the time we get done, we'll have looked at dozens of private ways, and I think it might be a good idea to circle back to the ones where we said no and see if having looked at so many private ways and thought this through for so many private ways, do you have any second thoughts about the ones we turned down? And this was the discussion I didn't want to get into with you until before the meeting started, because mm -hmm. I think I think there's a, a consensus that, with experience, we're we're having sort of a change of vision about some of the ones that we looked at earlier. Mm -hmm. So, so it, it's I just mentioned that in case it gives you any freedom to. From, from feeling, oh man, well we said no there, we have to say no here. I, I, I'm suggesting that perhaps we circle back at some point, go over those no's again and make sure that we haven't moved our position. Mm -hmm. and, and we can really focus on consistency at the same time. Yeah. I mean, I think that, all together. that'll be a good opportunity to do that because we will be able to look at the totality of the ones that are out there and, and say greater clarity. So. Uh, excuse me, but the ones that you've said no to, do they meet the same criteria that we're addressing here and our property? Those ones in the middle are all over the map. I, I think mean, that's like I think that that's part of our problem is that some do and that some don't. And as we learn more about what we think is appropriate, um, we feel the need to look back at some of the ones earlier on and say maybe maybe the criteria we're using at that point in time wasn't appropriate. Now that now that we've seen all the other things that are out there. And, and keeping in mind that ultimately our goal here is to try and bring in as many of the streets as we can. So, so I think that's what's guiding our thinking at this point. And part of the thing that I'm struggling with is, is we're now looking at a piece of an easement, a water and sewer easement that was never designed as a street or never laid out as a street. And the neighborhood decided to use that because it was more convenient to get to their homes through that easement. And so we've so abandoned the use of that other more right. that street that has more legitimate standing to be considered a street than this. And we've been plowing it. Yeah, I know. So I'm really conflicted yeah. about this. Well, and that was the nature of my question with Ned with regard to where he felt the in the, in the process the the 1960s petitioning stuff fell mm -hmm. fell because if it was on this particular stretch of road, it sort of I think it helped me get over the hump that you're having right there. Well, the question, what were they petitioning for? Yeah, and we don't know. That's why I'm saying we can assume, so that allows us to assume either, either way. way. Yeah. <laughs> Although the water line was in. Right. We know something was there. Yeah. Were any of the houses in there built after the water line went in? Yes. Oh, yeah, that one at the end must have been. Okay. So the water line went in from the newspaper clippings I read was that the homes were being built up there and they're all tying off of one individual water service, and there wasn't enough water to accommodate the two additional homes that were tied into it. And so through a long process, there was a betterment assessment assigned by the, the water commissioners at that point, or the Board of Public Works, to bring in the water line, but I don't think they ever went through the actual assessment. It was supposed to be, I believe, $2,400 per household, is what I read, but it was never done. So would anyone like to make a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion. I move that we uh, recommend to the City Council that Pine Valley Road, um, as defined
signed by the easement but extended at the far end uh, be accepted as a public work? Second. Yeah. Further discussion on that? <clears throat> so just to be clear, we're li this motion leaves off Pine Valley Extension. So basically what you're saying is you're going to plow Pine, you hope to be able to plow Pine Valley Road extent, Pine Valley Road, but the two homes that are on the extension, what happens to them? They can't get to Pine Valley Road unless they're plowed. And then, then, and also, then also where he ends, that road, you, you do know that road continues down to Ron and Cindy Childs. That goes down there. That's never been plowed. That road forms a big teardrop. Which one? Yeah. It used to be. The original road that was built there. Oh, right. Well, Ryan Cindy. It used to be. Yeah. yeah. They used to plow it, and Borowski got mad because the kids wore their brakes down there on the show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, well, so give us a chance right. to talk some more. <laughs> um, if you go to the, uh, the bit, have you been up there recently? Oh, you were just there? Yeah. He was there. So if, when we went to the end, there was the house right there, the base house, and then tucked in behind, you can see it on the... Well, that's not the problem. Yeah. It's there on the top of the uh, page. But that's never been plowed. It looks like the driveway. Of the house this where we're talking about. Yeah, this through road. there and then down through there. And you talk about the two houses on the end? Yes. The driveway on the side? My understanding is that is my driveway. That is a private. Yeah. But the so road coming into the front, that's in the front that's of that. To the driveway is yeah. the so where do Ron and Cindy live? They live down the road. Past where that yeah. first house before their house, and you have that little hill to the left. That's that's their house. Ron and Cindy. Eye of the needle. If you wrap yeah. around that. Ron and yeah. Cindy were the ones that said they would let the town have part of their land to have the DPW be able to turn around with the plows. On the driveway. Oh really? It always stopped at the end of that house. Yeah. And I don't think that merits consideration as a public. Visible from here. Oh, that's this house right here. And this that's what's going to be. There's a house here. Ron and Cindy's going to get closed. So I thought. And then when the extension is not going to get closed, it's just going to be right up to your house. That's it. I know. I know. all right so we have a motion on the table that has been seconded to recommend that the city council accept Pine Valley Road, which we're defining as the broad road that goes up through the yard with all of the stuff in the yard and then curves around to the left, ending where those two beige houses are. That's the motion on the table. Any further discussion on that? All in favor of making that recommendation to the city council? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Aye. And I'm abstaining. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Talk about your huh? I, only just, it just feels really murky and compared to the votes that I've not made <coughs> before, I feel very uncomfortable saying yes to this when we've said no to things that, in my mind, have much stronger standing mm -hmm. uh, as a clear public way. I think that this, what we're here, seeing here, is sort of a, a folly of pre-zoning building activity. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, we might at some point choose to step in and solve that. But in the process that we're going through in terms of evaluating the existing 
process that we have to take things that look like public mm -hmm. ways and make them public ways? I, I can't find this to feel like a public way. But the fact of the matter is you've been maintaining that role for quite some time. Why would you pull out on us now? You kind of put yourself into this situation by continuing well, well, to maintain. <coughs> so, um, so perhaps as the surveying is done, you may come back with some fine-tuning recommendations. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, great. So, basically what will happen is we have voted to recommend that the City Council accept your street. Um, the next steps, which as I explained the other day, will take months, is that we'll uh, put your street in the queue for having a survey done. Uh, figuring out more accurately what we're call, what we're going to define as the street, and then that'll um, get forwarded to the city's attorney to draw up the legal papers, and then that whole package survey plus legal work goes to the city council. <clears throat> we assume at that point that they, they would concur and accept the street. Um, and should this process take more than the summer, which wouldn't surprise me, uh, you're somewhat. Uh, yeah, late in course. the process, we've already looked at a couple dozen other streets. Um, should it tip go into next year, winter, my assumption is we would continue plowing while we get the legal work and the survey finished. That would be greatly appreciated. Okay. Can I ask you another question? Would it be easier for you if you, if this is all goes through, if you went down and made that loop through Cindy and Ron, Ron. Ron and just <clears throat> continue that road as a circle? Would that be easier for <laughs> I mean, Maybe. I know you come to the I end know, at my property. We don't know where Cindy and Ron live. <laughs> they sound really, they sound really nice. But <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll stop by later. But. <laughs> it's, at some point, the, uh, a city engineer will go out, the, the surveyors will be there. I'd just inquire if that would be easier for you to just, you, make the, you come in, you make the loop, you go right back out. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. know. It's just a suggestion, I don't know. Yeah, because now they the back staff. up like three, four times to yeah. get out of that little place yeah. to go back. We would let the staff uh, advise us on that. Okay. 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 Great. Sounds okay. good. Thank you very Do much. Do we need to move on and make a decision about the Pine Valley Road extension? We could. Because I think that we were, the vote we just made was just for the main body right. and not for the spur. Right. 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 Okay. And that, There's been no petition received on Pine Valley Road extension. Well, were we expecting that to be just part of what we were looking at the That's other day? That's what they asked us to do. Um, it's really a common driveway is what it is. We have no city utilities. It serves, I believe, two homes. But we've been plowing it as we've been yeah. plowing other yeah. places that we've We have plowed, plowed. yeah. Is it listed as a private way, or are you saying no, We have not? no record of Pine Valley Road extension anyway. We have Pine Valley Road. Huh. That is a matter of convenience that we're up there. We plow, I really don't know. Historically, we've done it. The ladies disabled there also. Very much so. When that was originally laid out, the right of way went no. all the way around my house and came back out on Burkett Road. It never came to be. It was also never part of the public notice. Pine Valley Road Extension. We could make a motion that the extension should essentially mimic the report we just made and make us an additional piece that says that part of the street, Valley, Pine, Pine Valley Road, Pine Valley Road, known as Pine Valley Road Extension, commonly understood to be Pine Valley, Pine Valley Road Extension, and take a vote just to make it clear if we want to proceed that way. Because what I'm hearing us say right now that what we just said is, is that the vote of the board is, is that we will move it Pine Valley Road forward in the, along the process, but the Pine Valley Road extension is not part of that conversation. Right. And so in fairness to the folks who are here, trying to figure out whether or not their houses are going to get the same service they got last year or not, I think it, it behooves us to make a vote even though we might not have made a public hearing official notice because we didn't know the street existed. We didn't know that the private right. way existed as a private way. So, so, Annette, is it your contention that we would have required a separate petition for that little spur? Mm -hmm. Just like we did for Bad Creek South, an extension. So we had, there were three 
um, petitions for Bradford Street? There was one petition, but there were separate votes done. And oh, okay. Public hearing so we don't need up. another petition or another hearing. That it's not part of anything that we actually were planning to look at when we, went, when we actually went out there. It was requested when we got there to look at it. And how is that different than Bradford Street? Bradford Street, we were going to look at north, south, and extension. And there was three separate votes. And there were, and, they, and one of them. And one of them failed. Yeah. Failed because it was a common driveway. <coughs> so I think we could talk about the extension now. You know where I stand. Are, are we still in discussion mode? <laughs> yes. I think I'd have to go look at it again because I don't really know. I, I I was out there a while ago and I can see what, what I can see from the maps and the, the Google thing, but I'd have to go look at it and really understand what the neighbors are talking about with the turnaround and what is that? Is that the extension? I don't know what the extension is. And you could go. <laughs> But it wouldn't be a public hearing. And only two of you could go, so it wouldn't be a quorum. Oh, I'm mean, wondering if that couldn't be uh, folded into our next sure. round. To a drive-by? No, as in next time we do six roads, mm -hmm. we do seven. Six and a half. Mm -hmm. yeah. So are you going to ask that a petition be created for the city council to send down to Pine Valley Road Extension? I think we have to. It, 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 What's the sticking point here is that we didn't make it part of the public hearing, so I think we have to make it part of the public hearing, and, which means we have we have to petition, or somebody has to petition. Somebody, six residents have to petition. Right. Yeah, but this partition that you're talking about and everything like that, uh, where it all started was uh, uh, Pine Valley Extension, Mary Ann Carter and them. Really? And then me, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's where it all began. I, I'm still struggling to determine why this is any different. So, so people on that extension signed the uh, yes. petition. Yeah, yeah, both yeah. of them. That yeah. particular they were there. They were there Saturday at the meeting. But the, but but the petition was for Pine Valley. Valley Road. The petition didn't say Pine Valley Road extension. Well, that's but Bradford that's Street didn't say. Bradford Street Street said north, south, and extension. But we in, have, in the petition, petition? but no. we made the, that was one of our petitions, right? So they're all our petitions, Terry. Otherwise, this ball doesn't move anywhere. That's the problem we were having. How do we get this project moving? Well, these people gave us their petition late last year. Mm -hmm. I would argue that we should be able to consider it under this public hearing. The reason for the public hearing is to notify all the abutters. All the abutters should notify. Mm -hmm. It was out in the paper. We all understood that area of Northampton to be Pine Valley Road. I don't think anybody would be surprised if we made a decision on Pine Valley Valley extension in the realm of this kind of Chris, I'm with you on the spirit of the thing, but I, I just, I don't, I don't want to have to get in a position where we're reinventing the wheel over and over again. Mm -hmm. So I just, okay. I just want to be sure that, I mean, what, what, what I hear Ned saying is that this thing wasn't included in the petition as it was drafted. I think the spirit portion of it kind of covers that, um, but I also. Um, my other concern is that this isn't on our list of private ways, as I understand. It's not a separate private. It's not a separate entity, um, and uh, unless unless it's included in what we looked at as Pine Valley Road, if it's not listed as a if if if, if it's not included as that private way, and it's not a it's separate private way, I don't even know what its status is. Well, it's probably the same status as Pine Valley Road itself because it really doesn't have standing yeah, yeah. except for what the neighborhood is defined by driving yeah. over it. I mean, I'm happy to discuss it. I'm just a little concerned that we're going to end up coming back to it anyhow. Well, I think we should come back to it. Okay. Can I say one thing, though? Who, who's the one to put the street signs up? We have a, there's a street sign that says Pine Valley Extension, and there's a street sign that says Pine Valley. Mm -hmm. The state's asking us to Valley clarify all of that. The city though. didn't do that. I did it. Oh, you did? The, the end of the road says Pine Valley Road? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I bought and paid for that. All right. Oh. So, Ned, you want to start a separate process for the extension? I think it should change personally. Okay. I think that's your call. I mean, it's okay. All right. So, okay with me, Ted. I'd like you to do that. Okay. I'd like you to go see this before you find out what we're talking about. So we, so, we are going to create a separate process for the extension. And um, the, at least the people on the extension will get notification. I'm sure you'll all hear about it when that comes. And we'll be back. <laughs> You'll be back. Okay. In the meantime, you're going to put in a proposal to follow through with this? Yeah, Pine Valley will move forward. Thank you so much. Okay. We really do appreciate it. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. We really do appreciate it. If I could just uh, circle back to the thing about revisiting the, um, the ones where we've said no. Would you be comfortable if uh, Ned and I are being, have been invited back to the city council? Uh, to continue talking about um, the two where we've said no. And um, can I put that out there that we're planning to circle back to those streets where we've said no? Yes, sure. Okay. All right. We've said no to more than two. We have. But they've only seen oh, officially. The, uh, okay. The two that we've Yeah. yeah. Those two. We made the assumption that this couple was with all the others. Right. And we might have been general. Same with Lawn. What? Lawn. 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 Lawn.
Right. And uh, I suspect you probably ran into a resident. You did? Yeah. So there weren't any residents there. Really? Nobody showed. Well, there was one they of know. the porches, but yeah. they yeah. did not participate. They probably didn't know, yeah. Ned, does the staff have any um, thoughts on Buckner? Personally, I think it functions like a public way, except that, I mean, it's wide enough. I mean, you look at your criteria, yeah. and, and worse, the only thing that's the oddity is it's a single owner who owns all the land. But there are a lot of residents, 11 residents. I think. They're all renters, right? Yep. They're all renters, that's correct. Right. And we have water and sewer running under it? We have water and sewer easements, and there is a connection coming in from Texas Road with an easement through the property. And the force main to connect to that sewer line. And we constructed that, I believe, in 2004 with new water, new sewer, and new pavement. So the water and sewer line is ours? Yes. So that's, that's where it's a little different because if it was just a condominium association, then the water and sewer no. line would tap out to the street. No. And that would be a privately owned service. Mm -hmm. I, I have in my notes that. The owner originally bought the easement. Is that true? My understanding, the owner, the previous owner, was wanted it to remain a private way, but now that he's passed on, you Got have it. new family members that are it's in probate right now. That who knows where it's going to end up. <coughs> the two people that showed up wanted it to become a public way. The other, the other thing I have in my notes is that the trust already has commercial snow removal for the off-street portion of the parking. Yep. Right. <coughs> So, I, I mean, this gets you thinking about un unintended consequences. Condo associations throughout the city that never expected to receive city services. Um, it's one, one ownership, and that's really what this is, in, in my view. I think it more closely follows that model. It, I agree with Ned. It, if, if it were multiple properties, I think I'd be recommending this be considered a public way because it has enough of the other characteristics. But I think the single ownership is a, is a very important factor that would sway me to um, consider it um, private. They should take care of themselves. Is that a motion? Because I would second that. that. I would second that. We <laughs> put it in motion format. Are you telling me that? No, I'm just trying to see what it looks like. <laughs> see, we don't become suspicious. Like <coughs> it looks great. But it looks yeah. like there's no way out. There's yeah. the street. There's the building. Yeah. There's the yeah. building. Like the the building. Yeah. What do you mean? It's all rental. Yeah. It's, this is a unique situation. It's not like your words. <laughs> well, so, so those might not quite... Well, I can make a motion. I so move use that. Why don't we write a new one? I move that Pocket Avenue mm -hmm. uh, does not qualify as an accepted city street. In light of this finding, we hereby direct the DPW to cease snow and ice removal on this roadway as of FY 2014. Second. <laughs> <laughs> Further discussion about Park Way. All in favor of not basically <clears throat> so the motion is that we feel it does not qualify to become a city what doesn't be doesn't qualify what is now what is there by, uh, by virtue of its single property ownership okay oh that's in the motion what might, be. Now? might be <laughs> I don't think it needs to be I think, think yeah I think that they can follow the discussion about what we're talking well, about that's okay right. not in the motion all right so the motion on the table is to is the pocket avenue does not qualify to become a city street and that we will cease plowing snow as of FY14. Mm -hmm. All in favor of that motion? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstains? No, I, I, I think I have enough information to go on. 
Mm-hmm. So, so you voted aye. Okay. Yeah. Great. <clears throat> now, Service Center Road. I make a motion that uh, Service Center uh, does meet the criteria to be accepted as oh. a public way. Second. Second. Any discussion? Uh, Ned, do you want to? So there's a layout plan at the Registry of Deeds that was um, by an unknown survey or civil engineer that I'm aware of, um, but a plan was uh, done and developed and recorded there. Um, it was approved by the Planning Board. So that's kind of the reason why this one's in front of us. It was never approved by the city council. And I can't use the old plans because they don't meet our current standards for uh, PLS stamps on the plans. So that's why we went out and saw this one. Okay. I have a question about the section of travel in, in front of Ralph's, of Pecan Street, is, and that, which is not a part of this motion. Right? That's correct. Do, do we plow that, or how does it? It's always clear in the winter. I don't know. I'm I don't believe that we plow that. So there's trucks. Trucks. Well, he's got his plowing to do anyway. Yeah. It's just interesting that it's well plowed, but we don't do it. <laughs> Jack Fortier must do a bunch of plowing in there. He didn't mention it. Sure, he's got. <coughs> he's got all those parking it's lots. All parking lot. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he owns not all. Well, yeah, then he must, yeah. All of it? It works. All of it. He must own the whole 131. Where Webbs is, where the... He must own this lot right here, 131. Yeah. Where the old A&W is? All of it, yeah. Where the Florence Savings Bank is. Can we move the question? Yeah, I'm sorry. So all in favor of um, recommending the City Council accept Service Center Road. Aye. 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 Uh, next uh, for your discussion is Carpenter Avenue. Up Finn Street and ends up in back of the walk, I think it is, the Chinese restaurant. It's behind the Chinese restaurant. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, got it. Okay. I mean, uh, UK. Okay. I make a motion that we accept Carpenter Avenue uh, as a street, as a public way. Second. Uh, Ned, your thoughts? There was a layout created back in the um, 60s for this. For some reason, it fell apart again. Like, a lot of these things fell apart in 1960 for reasons I don't have. But there was petitioned, the city engineer created a layout, and it got stopped. For and this city reason. engineer is Wimet? Yes. We had to dig him up. <laughs> I know the one met. We should name we should name a private way after. Oh. <laughs> Any discussion about Carpenter Avenue? So we have a motion on the table to recommend that the city council accept Carpenter Avenue as a private way. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Gosh, I think we should have just used these maps and not even bothered. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, all right, next is uh, Sanderson Avenue. Sanderson is off of Franklin Street near Elm Street. Dead end with a turnaround. Yeah, well, he's yeah. got the circle at the end. And it's fairly wide because there are no sidewalks. I, uh, I move we recommend that the City Council accept Sanderson Avenue as a public way. Second. Second. Uh, Ned, do you have any thoughts? No. Any discussion? All in favor of recommending that the City Council accept Sanderson Avenue? Aye. Aye. Okay. Did I tell you the um, what the Planning Board says in the discussions in front of the City Council about um, the two Bradford South and um, Center Court. <clears throat> we got a copy of what they say. They say it's too tough to call. Um, it doesn't meet current current planning board criteria. So really, it's a political decision. Great answer. Well, 
for all 50 properties. No, but it, you know, it's either obviously a street or they say, ah, it's a political decision. You're talking about the Bradford Street extension? No, the, the, the one with two fact, houses. That is one of them. The, the oh, Bradford Street ex extension. Oh, that's the extension. That's the driveway that goes to the two houses. No. It's about 10 feet wide. Yes. Yeah, yeah, south. south. That was south. That was south. Oh, it was south. Oh, okay, sorry. <coughs> okay, moving along. Uh, we have to set a date for a claims committee meeting on 54 Water Street and 194 Grove Street. Could that be before our next meeting? June 12th. June 12th. Is that when it is? I think so. Yeah, that's the second Wednesday. Yeah, June 12th. I wrote the times down because the people request said they on Grove said they could be here at 5:15. Oh, okay. Uh, next, for your consideration, a one-year extension of contract 30-13 for water testing and analysis to Spectrum Analytical. Um, basically, it would extend their contract to July 28, 2014. Move approval. Second. It's just a one-year extension. And what? Are we, which water are we testing? Uh, this is for drinking water. So do they go up to the... Plants, or we, I think we typically bring samples to them for analytical testing. From where? I'd have to pull the contract to get all the details, but uh, you approved the contract last year as a one-year contract with a one-year extension. Right. I'm just tr trying to understand. So do we collect vials of water out in Haydenville and drive it to them? Or? I believe that we do the copper and lead rule testing with that also. Uh, so there's a number of different places we go and do collect samples for their testing. And those have to be tap water tap in a house, water. right? That's correct. And there's probably some other water samples that are affiliated with this that aren't tap samples. They're done maybe from the plant or somewhere else. Like I said, I have to go get the detailed list if you want. I can grab it if you want. Pardon me? I can grab the contract if you want. No, I'm just, I'm interested. We put in a corrosion control facility years ago, you know, like late 90s maybe. Because if you drew water from a typical faucet of an old house, the slightly acidic water was leaching the cop or the lead out of solder. Um, that's why I'm just wondering. So are they going into you know, grandma? They're going to Huntley's a number house of different houses and facilities or buildings to test that. Yeah. Using a random number generator to decide. No, what actually, house. they're decided by DEP as to what homes are going to be tested. Is, it, is the pricing the same as the previous year? Yes. So the total value of the contract that you approved last year was not to exceed twenty four nine nine nine, uh, but last year we spent about seventy five nine or seventy six hundred dollars on testing. Okay. All in favor of approving the one year extension? Aye. 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 Next contract for aluminum sulfate to Holland Company in the amount of nineteen thousand seven hundred dollars. Approval. Second. This is our annual contract at the wastewater treatment plant for uh, coagulant. It's the same price as last year of uh, ninety-eight and a half cents per gallon. Water treatment. Water treatment. Did I say last one? You did. I'm sorry. <laughs> Water treatment. I'm sorry. No, it's not. It all coagulates. Any discussion about this? All in favor of approving the contract for alum aluminum sulfate? Aye. Aye. Uh, contract for the design and permitting of the removal of the Upper Roberts Meadow Dam, the GZA, in the amount of $236,000. Move approval. Okay. okay. This is a contract for GZA for the design, the no, final design and permitting for the removal of the Upper Roberts Meadow Dam. Um, fairly lengthy contract and includes a lot of work, um, as you can probably imagine. There's a lot of environmental permitting associated with, with removing the of the dam. That's reflected in there. Um, 
in their proposal to get tools or our local, state, and federal permits that are necessary. Um, there's a contingency for historical work that may need to be done. Um, there's some additional field investigations um, to gather additional data needed to complete the final design and then the pre preparation of the final um, design plans and specifications. Um, so Is this in line with what we were expecting? Um, it is. I know that a couple of years ago when we were first looking at this, we were looking at these costs. It is. Um, it's painfully expensive, to be honest with you. Um, and I think when you look at the cost of the project as a percentage of the cost of construction, it's on the high side. And I think uh, it's really related to the amount of um, number of permits that are necessary to, to, to do the job. We scrubbed this proposal pretty completely. We got a draft a couple of months ago from GZA and Nicole Sanford, our environmental scientist, and I had spent a significant amount of time reviewing it and marking it up and questioning the costs and going back and forth and back and forth. And we're at the point where we're, we're happy with where the proposal is and we think it's what we need and, and the fee we feel is reasonable for what needs to be done. So, but it is, it is a lot of money and I wish it wasn't so much. So. I reviewed it, and normally I give Jim a call to go over some of the nitpicking questions I have, um, but I didn't get a chance to do that today. So um, I'm trying to remember uh, some of the issues that I had looked at. Uh, excuse me. Well, another question that I have to the director. How much is the actual removal life going to cost and how do we pay for it? The grant we had approved for $1.3 million and the grant that we applied for. Okay. So we have pending <coughs> federal uh, FEMA, FEMA grant money, $1.3 million to pay for the, the removal of the dam. Would that cover the total cost? No. It 75%? 75% reimbursement. 75%. And the money to remove the dam is in this year's That's correct. budget. That's correct. Yes. And this expenditure is totally above and beyond everything else. The, the permitting contract. That we were talking about. Exactly. Plus, plus 1.3. Um, we had money in the budget for both. For, for the permitting, oh. the design, and the construction. But we're saying that the total will be 1.53. 1.3 plus. I actually can't recall, to be honest with you, whether the 1.3 included the design. It did. 1.3 included the design. Okay. So, so the mobile was estimated to be about a million. That's correct. So the design is, is like 20%. Is that, and I'm not going to vote against it, but I'm just curious. Is that. It's high. Is, is it? Yeah. yeah. Wow. It's because we had this list of permits. Yeah, I was looking at that. I mean, it's crazy long. It's like. There's 70,000 in the permitting. Yeah. Um, Mike, do you feel like you'd like. No, I, I, if I could look at the spreadsheet. It's, it's on the very back. Very back. Um, so what I normally do is I go through the tasks and I look at the written description. And, and fortunately, I, I just, I, I have a feel for whether the pricing is reasonable. I don't know what, what other firms would do it for, but I... So I only check to see if there's a big flag that says we're paying too much, or in some cases they haven't realistically um, carried enough money. And so as I went through it, um, all the tasks uh, seemed quite reasonable to me, except for the permitting task. And, and it's not that it's not reasonable, it's that it's um, high because of the unique requirements of this project. Permitting costs far exceed the design costs on this project, just because of the nature of it. And um, so I, I'm comfortable enough going forward. It's just I don't have in my background uh, enough experience to know whether or not that total is right or not. But we've got the staff that's looked at it and worked on it, so I'm I'm comfortable with that. And then the other issue 
that I, I was going to raise, but I, I think it's moot, is it looks like the, to the total price of 236 is the sum of the sort of the primary tasks and then there's some optional tasks, except the op some of the optional tasks aren't really optional. I, so I was, I was nitpicking with how they <laughs> categorize them. Historical services is an optional task, but permitting expenses is an allowance. It's not really optional. Yeah, the, and the historical services, a, a better term would be contingency, yeah. depending, depending on the requirement. Yeah, and they did use the word contingency. So these are really not. So contracts, everything included, and I think that makes sense too. So uh, I, I can support this. As yeah. far, as yeah, far as, I just want to, to speak to the uh, to the permanent cost being high, and um, Nicole Sanford, who's well, you know, Nicole, right? So uh, she did a lot of this type of permitting as a consultant for many years before she started working for the city. She has a reasonable handle on what it costs to do some of these types of projects. She had done some dam removal projects actually with GZA as a sub for them when she was uh, in consulting. So. I did have to ask her to review the numbers, and we did have some back and forth with them. So I feel like we did a fairly critical review of, of their, their initial proposal. And I mean, the numbers are so high. I, mean, I agree with Mike that uh, they're high. You wish they weren't so high, but um, I think they're real numbers based on our numbers. And if, in fact, a couple of the permits sail through, do we get a break? <laughs> Just <laughs> I mean, is it, in other words, I'm sure if it takes them longer, they're going to come back for more money. If it takes less time, it'll be a windfall. Big windfall. Huge. Okay. It's the, uh, it, it would be time and expense on the, uh, on the permits. So if for chance something goes through very smoothly, right. then we'll be rich. And what are the... Um, What's your forecast for the FEMA? It's still in the, I know the state's approved it. Federal people are just sitting on it. That's where it's at. It's under project review, environmental review right now. We haven't heard anything on this particular project except it's under review. And does the contract with GZA also uh, include sort of the construction monitoring? It does not. It includes everything up to bid documents. So it'll be another contract for construction of the site of the project. So at some point you'll bid it out yes. based on their is their so we do have a letter on file with FEMA regarding pre engineering costs and design costs, uh, design permitting and so on. That it we requested that it be included being reimbursable before they offer us the grant. So it's the standard request we make with all our projects. Just so you're aware of that. Okay. That way, even this money has a chance of being reversed to us. Usually, they don't consider the project ready until they make the award. But we knew that we had to move this thing along, so we put that letter request in. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? So, all in favor of awarding the contract to GCA to design the removal and prepare the bid documents and secure, <coughs> secure the permits? All right. Aye. 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 Uh, change order number one to contract 273-13 to Concalves construction for the North King Street water main construction in the amount of $2,100. This change order is being done because we've asked, we've asked for them to do nighttime work for us on this project so that we have to shut off a lengthy part of North King Street that we shut off Rockridge Retirement Community, State Police Barracks, and basically we've got whole north end of North King Street. So we talked to the contractor about it and talking to the business community to Rockridge. We decided to do this at night time, uh, starting about 10 o'clock at night, just to relieve a concern. So there is additional work they need and uh, vehicles, uh, nighttime lights, and uh, just some abatement here for asbestos removal on the all it's not. So that way we can do this switching over from the old water line to the new water line without really affecting anyone in the wee hours of the morning. And how will we get the word out about this? Uh, reverse 911 call. Rockridge is already aware of what we're planning to do. The state police, if they're 
community is, but everyone will be applied to the reverse 911 law. We believe water will be shut off between nine, uh, four to five hours while we do this. And is 10 cons considered to be a good time to start that? By the time we get things started, it's probably closer to 11 or midnight that you actually doing the shutdown and perform the physical work. All in favor of approving this change order? Aye. Aye. Uh, channel improvements at the Roberts Meadow Brook, uh, taking advantage of the hazard mitigation grant. <clears throat> so at the last meeting, you tabled or postponed this one. Uh, Jim brought up concern that this might not be our property, it might be city property. And you flagged this from a Board of Public Works flyer that in 1966, at the request of Councilor Mizanti and members of the Leeds Civic Association, and after studying consultation with the Massachusetts Department of Public Health, the Board of Public Works certified to the City Council that the Lower Leeds Reservoir, quote unquote, swimming area, was no longer needed for water supply, and return and excuse me, and turn the property over to the City Council, contingent on stated requirements of the Mass Department of Public Health. I went down to City Hall today and looked at the 1966 records of the City Council, and the only thing I was able to find in the, the big book was uh, a discussion about filling the reservoir back up so people could use it for swimming purposes. There's other files downstairs that Wendy Mazza didn't have with her, but she was going to make copies for me and send them up to me. So, from what Jen had found in the 1966 records or, or given to me, um, I'm still trying to find out what the City Council did in 1966 or perhaps 67 on this particular piece of property. And the issue is if the city owns it, then it's clearly a stormwater project? Um, the question is, is who's going to come up with the, the money, for, money for funding the project yeah. overall, which is about $450,000. But the reimbursement is 75%, so someone's going to be left holding about $120,000. And the mayor would like the water enterprise fund to pay for it because it's water property. Unless it's city property. That's correct. So we're still trying to figure out what happened in 66 or 67. Okay. So no action required. Um, are we, as you mentioned of the grant, so are we advanced any sort of time frame? We have um, 90 days to commit to, once we get the obligation paperwork from FEMA to sign off on, there's going to be a time frame that we have to sign and return that back to them. We have to have, to show them that we have the money in place for this project in the 90 day period once we do that commitment paperwork. And that 90 day hasn't day. started ticking yet. Okay. I guess my thought is that, I mean, th this happens as we're in the midst of discuss discussing how to fund stormwater. And if this is, in fact, a water enterprise fund problem, fine. But if it's simply convenient to push it over there because the city would rather not come up with the money, I think then that would circle back to this discussion we're having, hopefully citywide, about stormwater. So this was placed in FY uh, CIP, Capital Improvements Plan, for FY12 and FY13, um, and was never acted on by the City Council or approved. But both the River Road project and this particular project, uh, uh, Roberts Meadow Brook, were, I was considered being out of the general fund and not using water enterprise funds, and that's what we submitted to Capital Improvements. Well, like I said, they never acted on them because they didn't have the pool of money. At this point, with the pending river road project, capital improvements is going through with um, the $400,000 for the river road project. And so would you say that I was... Would you agree that if it's city property, it's a city problem? Yes. 
so what I was wrestling with also the fact that by doing this retaining wall or this flood control wall, it actually pr protects a number of general utilities also. The bridge downstream, the roadway downstream. Yes, we have water and sewer utilities, but there's also drainage utilities in the street too. So at a minimum, I always thought it was a it is a shared expense too. But um, I'll just keep researching <coughs> this and see what I can find. Well, yeah. and, and we have we have a couple couple months at least to uh, um, figure I think this we have out. Two weeks to figure this out. Okay. Um, private ways, general discussion. Um, we filed the rest of the petitions today with City Council. Uh, we have, according to my review, we have 13 left to go see. Uh, Massasoit has come up again, Massasoit Avenue. They actually filed a petition, so we're going to have to go off our, that particular private way again. As you recall, the first six private ways we went to were views. They weren't actually public hearings. And so out of those first ones came back was Edgewood Park. Um, uh, there was four of them that actually came. Massasoit now coming back in petition that we're actually going to have to go see, which we already did Edgewood and Park. But, so Massasoit is coming back. So there's 13 total that I'm aware of. And that doesn't include the, the River Valley? Sorry. Pine Valley, Pine Valley, Valley extension. extension? No. <laughs> So I believe that we'll be able to cover this in probably two more meetings. I wanted to get the petitions in, so because we, we only have four petitions on the table right now, so I'll make sure we have at least six for the next meeting. And I'm sure that you probably want to set the next Saturday meeting, unless you want to start meeting in the late afternoon hour, since we have late until 7.30 at night or so. That's your call. <laughs> Our, uh, how do people feel about the Saturday morning thing? It seems to have worked out pretty well. Are we, we certainly get a nice vacation? crowd. Well, if we're doing it in two more, though, that's, well, maybe. Those ones in July. August. We can take a vacation in August. What? Yeah. One in June, right. one in July. Two in June. I'll be, I'll be one in June. In June. Oh, yeah. Last, last, oh, two, last two. No, it's we'll just we last two weeks. September. <laughs> so, but for for example, we could uh, June 15th. Not time for notice. Oh, man. Um, what do you think it's saying? July 6th. I will be on the cape. I, I think all we have to do is make sure that we can achieve. We need to do pre quorum so it does that. Quorum liftoff. We need a quorum for public hearing, right? Do not. No. Do not. You do not. Do not. So we can still oh. schedule that. Because I, I think that our schedule, I know my personal schedule is going to be crazy, so. Yeah. I just well, think that. We're going to lose the girls on the 15th. It'd be a more raucous event. Oh. <laughs> I mean, that's simple, <laughs> is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> like, you have to force guys you can bring along. Again. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm okay for the rest of the summer. But not just. So you're going 15, 22, 29? 15, 22, 29, that's correct. Okay. Um, but I'm going 15 and 22nd. I survived missing this one. It tore me apart, but I survived. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was only because they were serving chocolate for some for coffee where I was. Oh, right, exactly. So for the boys, mm -hmm. would the 15th June work 15th, out? I think it works. June 15th is fine. Yeah. I think so. Okay. Want to go with that? Sure, sure. Wow. Now, are we going to go for a new record? 13? 
No. Right. Let me let me take a look at what we have in front of us and see if there's right. some ones like we had last time. It took eight minutes to get through, and right. I can do it. I can try to schedule seven, if not eight. Oh, and then that will work because I'll be gone for the tw the twenty the meeting of the twenty sixth, so I won't have to vote on. I would if you have them and it's doable. I would go for eight just in case we get one wild card at the end of the if like another necessary pops up. It, is that do you looking at your tea leaves? Do you see any potential candidates for something like that? I'm kind of surprised we didn't hear from Bottoms. To be honest with you, I'm surprised too. Okay, so I'll try my best to coordinate eight and try to get them all groups so they're close together and not spread out across the community. And so that's 615. 615? June 16. Oh. <laughs> June 16. June 16. That's a early start. That's a <laughs> So would we still keep the gym at all in for three hours, nine to do it nine to 12? We would try to, yes. BJ, could I, um, just so I... I'm more alert to it. Could I ask you to put the public comment up at the beginning of the um, agenda? You mean right, it's the right oh, there. Oh. <laughs> oh, this up here. Down. Well, it's down here also. How about if you made it all capitals? Underline it. Underline it. Underline it. Tough crowd. Yes. So we're going to talk about public comment. <laughs> Do you want it somewhere else out there? No, no, no. See, you've got it two places. I'm liking this. That's well, no, we were going to talk <laughs> about it. Because yes. we, right. we sort of came to a conclusion. I thought we did. David, I think, thinks we did come to a conclusion. But let me let me summarize it as I as I saw it. And, but we, then we thought we wanted to pass it by you. But uh, we're taking this out of order. Stormwater's. Quite all right. Um, big events in stormwater world. The world of stormwater this past week, and we're now meeting basically every every week to try and get things ha uh, hammered out. Yeah. Tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow. Yep. Um, uh, I think the first thing is that uh, we had originally attend were planning on hitting a uh, May thirty one deadline for recommendations to the council. That's not going to happen. Uh, we haven't set a new date, but I think the feeling amongst the committee members, with the exception of one or two, is that we're closing in on it, and we're probably talking about two or, hopefully, two additional meetings. Um, there's, I think there, there are probably people on the board who think we could have hit the 31st deadline, but there, there are some people with some sensibilities about the process where, in an effort to bring them into the fold, I think that we're going we're gonna to give them a couple extra times. I don't, personally, I think these people are intractable <coughs> on this, but, um, but we're going to give it another shot. And there, there is going to be some, there is going to be a lot of work that needs to be done in the drafting of the recommendations. That's going to take some time, and we haven't even gotten to determining who's going to do that. Um, the second big thing was uh, a really good consensus proposal by Terry and Bob Reckman was introduced at the last one, which I think encompassed a lot of the thinking of the majority of the members as far as um, how to deal with the, 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 basis, the, the basis of the fees. Um, and I'm going to defer to Terry to, to give us two minutes on that if he wants to. Um, the 2080. Jeez, I, I didn't... I didn't get the impression. I, I left a little bit early, but I wasn't sure that it was that well received. Oh, I think it was. Oh yeah. What, what did you think? No. <laughs> Maybe I was. With all due it. respect. Yeah. Yeah. To Terry's hard work with Bob Reckman. Where Where did you th see the problem? Is it Is it? Oh, I don't see any problem, but yeah. I just don't think that people were lining up behind any method at that point. I mean, they spent a lot of time going through this chart. And that was what I was going to do next. And kind of hammering, you know, hammering <clears throat> the different factors, but I don't. I didn't get the sense that uh, people were kind of lining up behind any of the methods. Um, in fact, um, to preview tomorrow night's meeting, um, Doug and I have been working with Rick Clark and Dan Felton separately. They each have come up with a, with a different proposal that they, they're going to be bringing forward to talk about tomorrow night. So um, 
and they're good. You know, I, I is this an ERU model? The work is, I mean, the work is fantastic. I, I, you know, Terry's work, everybody's work on the task force has been uh, has been great, and I think has advanced the situation to um, being closer to an end. I mean, I think that's what it is. It's and that's what the process is. You have to work on it, see what you like, see what you don't like, and I feel like they're getting there. And the work that, that Rick Clark and Dan Felton have been doing since the last meeting, I think, will advance things even further. So. Okay, well, that's good. That was my read, but I didn't realize that. Is is Rick's an ERU model? It's a modification of his ERU. And what's ERU? Has to do with measuring runoff. There are a couple of different ways you can you can tackle this. One is looking at the size of the lot. The other is looking at the portion <coughs> of the lot that's impervious. And then there's this other one, which is sort of. It, it, it's an attempt to get a, a handle on how much how much runoff is actually generated. Is that a good sort of... An ERU is an equivalent residential unit. Right. And you just define the runoff for a house. Mm -hmm. And then a car dealer might be 534 sure. ERUs. Yeah. And you use that as a pricing model across the city. Yeah. Yeah. So... So what, what Rick is doing with his model is just, um, so the equivalent rate residential unit, the downside of that method is that if it's just a straight ERU, it only lost would have a previous area in the bill. And I think the general consensus among the task force is that all property owners should contribute to the fee to contribute to flood control stormwater. So Dan, uh, um, Rick was making a modification to his ERU unit that would set up a provision for undeveloped properties to receive the bill as well to cover that general consensus that they should receive a bill. So I think it's a nice sort of advancement of this particular idea. And cool. uh, Dan as well has come up with something that's similar, similarly along that vein. That's good. And then we spent a good portion of the time going through this table up here, which was sort of uh, this, uh, what, what, what we felt would be the, the building blocks or, or should be at least considered in developing um, a fee system. And if you look at it, I won't go through each and every one of them, but if you look at it, there's high degrees of, of unanimity on almost every one of them, with the exception of the idea of, of commons, where we're split almost 50-50. And this is, this, is the, this is the concept that there are, um, there are certain areas of the community that, from which everybody benefits, um, and that there has to be a way to pay for them. And the question is, really has boiled down to whether you're going to separate them out and come up with some way of uh, accounting for the commons fee, and that was your 20%. Or acknowledging that there are commons, um, maybe take them off the board, but find another way to pay for them. And at the end of the day, they all they get paid for either way. It's just whether you're going to acknowledge this. I think in many ways it's a cosmetic discussion, but it has been sort of the central discussion of everything, and it has to do with this idea of commonly held property and how to deal with it. Um, and it comes up in, 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 in also in the concept of whether or not we're going to give the city a bill, which I think we I think that boat has sailed. I think we're in, in a place where the city is not going to get a bill, so, which is different from water and sewer. And initially, I, I, I was at the school that if you're going to build the city for water and sewer, you build them for everything. Um, and I've subsequently decided that just because it's a bad idea for water and sewer doesn't mean it should be a bad idea for the, the, new, the, new, the new enterprise fund. So um, I guess, you know, we're moving. We're moving. And hopefully we're going to wrangle something within a couple of weeks. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing Rick and Dan. And the other thing I'll say is, you know, um, when, when we talked about telling the city council that we weren't going to be able to hit the, the deadline, I think there was absolute agreement in that it had nothing to do with our due diligence, mm -hmm. um, that a lot of work had gone into it, and we were really getting to a point where you were going to have to, you were going to, have to tease out some, some very specific issues and resolve them, um, even as you were coming together on general concepts, and that that was going to take more time than, than the deadline was going to allow. So I, I don't think the deadline is... I ran into Paul Spector, and his concern was that that if we gave them more time, if, that we were given more time, we would waste it. But I don't, I honestly don't think that that's where we're at. I think we're really in problem solving mode at this point. The group has voted uh, to recommend that the city establish a fee of some sort. 
Um, so at this point, the discussion is, what's a good way to do that? And there, are, I'm sure there's going to be a discussion about how enterprise funds operate, because I think that that's the mechanism that everybody thinks. <coughs> I think that there's some confusion about some terminology of, uh, about how you administer the money. Um, would you say that that's right? Not everybody grasps what an enterprise fund is and the, and the difference between fees and taxes and, that, and those kinds of things. Yeah, I mean, I think there's some confusion, but I'm not sure how germane it is to their charge. I don't think it is germane at all, okay. I'm just saying, but it, 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 it keeps tripping people up. They're getting into the weeds on that. Yeah. The, it's, an, it's, a, it's like trying to pass judgment on uh, an accounting method. Um, the two primary ways you could do it is a revolving fund or an enterprise fund. Right. Revolving funds can't exceed 10% 10 10 of the property previous assessment. year's property assessments. Right. So right away, this fund is too big to fit into that container. Right. Mm -hmm. And revolving funds can't spend money in different fiscal years from when it was collected, which happens all the time in enterprise funds. Right. And they can't borrow money, which happens all the time in enterprise well, funds. Yeah. So for a variety of reasons, the revolving fund, which is the other, obvious, the other typical container, won't work. And I think, I think that, I mean, I haven't heard the phrase revolving fund at any of those meetings. Um, so I don't think people even acknowledge it out there. I think, what the, I think what the real problem is, is that there are some really <clears throat> smart people who this is not part of their portfolio. So they just don't <laughs> quite get it yet. Um, but they're going to come to it. Well, we're fortunate in having two models that have worked for many years and continue to work. Right. Yeah. But but even Without even those, I think some people coming into this weren't familiar with, with how they work. Right. But at least you're talking about something that's real yep. and present. Yeah, I agree. So. The guy I talked to the DOR said they created the enterprise fund structure exactly for this type of project. Yeah. Um, but in any event... As I said in that email, this is something that will be worked out between the city's finance director and the DOR, and it might, the format may have nothing to do with the desires of the committee. I think we're going to use that escape clause increasingly as we get closer, which is, this is something the city council ought to decide. But I think, I, talking, to, talking to Paul, I think that there is a willingness on the part of the city council to take on some of the inherently political decisions and deal with them that way. That they recognize that we're going to... I don't. I mean, he's only one of a group of people. I don't know where the rest of them are. But, uh, uh, you know, we're moving forward. Hopefully we'll be done. Thank you. Um, <sighs> public comment. we back to that again. <laughs> Third time. All right. Uh, any thoughts about our public comment process? Yeah, I, I think we ought to look at the public participation as being in two categories. One, one of which would be the three-minute comments that, that are outlined in the ordinance. Mm -hmm. w without a time, it would be up to us to set the time, but I would think it would make sense to copy the city council. Uh, and, and the other would be a, a a more substantial presentation or proposal or opinion that required uh, action on the part of, of the DPW, which would which you couldn't begin to do in three minutes, but but that the second category would become through a, a process, an informal process controlled by the chairman, to to be on the agenda as an agenda item. So, so that we wouldn't be subject to walk-ins presenting a 45-minute dissertation. And we've had a couple of those. So how about, I mean, they got a little out of control a few times for, for which I take uh, responsibility. But Tonight, you mean? Yes. Well, I thought this was good. I mean, it was germane and it was on the agenda. So but that wasn't public comment. That was an agenda. I don't agenda. Anymore. Right, but but it's an avenue for the public to get on the agenda. But mm -hmm. there has to be an issue and a, something in the way of a proposal, not just uh, a big discussion. Mm -hmm. So is is what happened this evening what you're talking about in this? Yeah, that would be the second category. Okay. Right, which sort of took care of itself. 
So you're proposing we let people who would like to speak on a particular topic give them a chance? Well, for three minutes. Two, two categories. One, the, the casual three-minute mm -hmm. limitation. Walk in, even in the middle of, well, not in the middle of the meeting, but, yeah. but walk in unannounced and wanting to talk about, just like the city council, which seems to right. work pretty well. But also a second avenue where, where larger proposals or considerations yeah. could be introduced to the agenda, but what would be on the agenda. So, otherwise, you're, you're having, you know, perhaps serious issues that are not on the agenda, you know, appearing in the meeting for action. So, I, so I just so I understand. So, for example, when we were discussing Pine Valley Road, are you suggesting there'd be a, a, a sub-agenda item, public comment? No, no, that that that, that was. That is their, they were here to comment when they had the opportunity to do it, but it, it, it just happens that it became an agenda item because it was scheduled and we had talked about it before, mm -hmm. we expected it. But, but Pine Valley could come in with some other totally new and unrelated to anything else issue, and, and if it had some, some substance, they could in effect apply to be on the agenda. But, but it would be under our control, whether they were right. our control, meaning the chairman's control, however he may delegate it, to, uh, to get on the agenda. So, for example, I'm just, I'm just trying to... So, for example, if they came and spoke for their three minutes at the beginning of a meeting and we said, man, that's, we should be honest, that's, those, you've raised some good points. Yeah. Then maybe we'll put that on the agenda for a subsequent meeting. That would be one way to get on the agenda. Right. But but they'd be open for the three minutes. Okay. It's a formalizing the three minutes, which mm -hmm. we haven't talked about, I don't think. But, but I think there's reason to, to do that. I'd like to concur. <laughs> I think that if somebody's coming in from the blue, out of the blue, that we should we have too much stuff on our agenda, and it, in fairness to everyone, I think we should put some limits on it. I think the three minutes it worked right. really well at the mm -hmm. city council. People get their three minutes, and there's a little discretion on the part of the chair in terms of extending it a little. But sure. but there's not this back and forth, and I think that that's actually quite helpful. <coughs> and are you okay with the back and forth, for example, around Pine Valley Road? Yeah, because that was an agenda item, and we yeah. I like the way we handle it. Then we move it. To the beginning of the agenda, to you know, to yeah. vote, to, as a courtesy to the people who came to be here because of that agenda item, and the way we we manage it is that we talk among ourselves and then we open it up to the floor. I mean, yeah, sometimes it does get a little yeah. unruly, but that's the nature of democracy. Sometimes. That's what Donald Rumsfeld said. Yeah, I also think that in this room, in this format, and the number of people that we have coming to these meetings, I think it's really easy to be much more. Informal. Mm -hmm. I think it's appreciated. I like it. You get more information when you think you like it. Sometimes you do have to say, okay, that's enough, and then we do our vote or whatever. I think we're doing, I, I really like the way this is, it's always been done that way, and um, I think just, I think this, what this does is allows people who are not here for anything on the agenda to say something, say why they're here, and it lets them right. go first, and I think the three minute uh, rule is important because we don't want to be lectured to for 20 minutes. Right. So could we have a, a little bit of text below public comment explaining that people may speak on uh, any topic for a maximum of three minutes? Just so it's right there. It's Unless it's on the agenda. Unless they're here to speak Unless specifically about an agenda. agenda. In which case we would ask that. We respectfully ask that mm -hmm. they hold their comments till it's on the agenda. But I also think that for for that portion of the the discussion, that we have some guidelines for what that will look like as well. I think that that should be capped at maybe five minutes, maybe seven or something well, like that. Reading. Yeah, we, we've already we've already experienced a couple of of, of, of lectures on topics that weren't of particular relevance. I think if we move this up. 
so it says three minutes. I think that should do it. No, I, I really want something that says specifically pre present presentations will be limited to this much time and you're invited to submit materials in advance and give us a synopsis of what, you, of what you've done um, rather than, uh, you know, like an executive summary, rather than the reading through of the ten pages of, of material. Well, that's sort of a three-minute thing. Uh, are you saying so somebody could petition to get to, to be an agenda item? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Sure. That makes sense. Yeah. Which would be a third situation. Yeah. Yeah. We've sort of got across the Pine Valley Road situation. We've got the comment on anything that uh, moves them to speak. At the mm -hmm. beginning, we've got Pine Valley Road where there's a little bit of give and take. Mm -hmm. And then the third way is someone... Someone has an issue, they want to come and talk specifically about an issue, and they request to get on the agenda, and if they do it in a timely manner, they get on the agenda. Mm -hmm. I think that makes perfect sense. But not that. Isn't not. that what we do already? And I'd yeah. like to say, if I speak to them and they ask to be on the, the agenda, I usually ask them to submit anything they have in advance. Great. Yeah. Right. Great. We I certainly said, looked at You know, I usually say the board likes to read any in pertinent in information, so... Thanks, Michael. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> okay. They don't. Well, that, I mean, all right, I get it all. I'm just trying to think. Uh, well, we don't have to do anything about it. Okay. Think, so we need maybe a little text, a little comment, public comment. Three minute limit? Three, or? three minutes, yes. Okay. Um, that's for second. If you're on the agenda, <coughs> we'll be taking your item out of order. Although I don't need to know if that needs to be written down. No, right? yeah. I think okay. that I like the way that we do it informal. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then Seems those people like who want to get on the agenda with something more substantial, their their front door might be through the public comment period, or I suppose. You mean like a continuation? Yeah, we say, oh man, that's great. We really want to hear more about that. Right. Let's put this on the agenda. Okay. Or, and, and actually, BJ has sometimes asked me if someone wants to be on the agenda. If I'm not sure. Yeah. Right. If it's something that you really want to have, I ask you. That's, you know, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Oh, man, solid waste. I love solid waste. We do. <laughs> something solid. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What do you got? Well, we're going to Chicopee Landfill with our waste now from the transfer station. It seems to be going okay. Landfill's closed. Yeah, Operations are Saturdays. Uh, we've seen an uptick here at the transfer station, up to before and after counts of the landfill closing, up to about a maximum of 200 cars on a day here. Uh, so we've seen some changes, and I think the crowd is, the crowds that come here, or customers that come here are trying to figure out what, what, what works best for them. Um, we had actually hired Susan Waite from Amherst DPW as a part-time helper for us right now until we uh, settle some affairs with our coordinator. Uh, what's going to happen with that, I'm not sure. So she's been a big help. I know she helped Huge. with the reuse committee this morning. She's fabulous. Everybody loved her. Good. So she'll be here for those uh, type of meetings and carrying forth any of the events that we have coming up in the near future. Um, everything's going fine. My, my daughter has a friend, Eric Duso. He's a uh, buddy's nephew. And we love him. We call him our son. Uh, we don't have a son. Uh, but he's a great kid. And he sent me a, a picture of his, the tip fee receipt, I guess would be. Mm -hmm. And he believes he was the last person to he was. Film. He was. Yeah, and he said, this is, and he, he texted, he said, this is, from, this is for Uncle Buddy. Oh, <laughs> like, that's yeah. great. <laughs> I was up there at the closing of the landfill at 3 o'clock on Friday, and there was some picture taking of all of us together with holding closed signs, and yeah. <laughs> he was our last customer. Yeah. Uh, was he lingering? Wait, no. You go, oh, okay. yeah, he was after making you, sure he was the last customer. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. He had the hood up. I, I did something wrong. I'll get it started in a minute. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. He's a great kid. I was just wondering how the volume of the yard waste worked out on the single Saturday. So far, it's working out 
my knowledge. I'm sure there's some customers who would like to have it open every Saturday, but that's not what we, what we plan to do at this point. I did an informal survey the last was the weekend last weekend or the weekend before last, and uh, of the of the workers there, and they they thought it was running pretty smoothly. Mm -hmm. Uh, they said that, that, that on a couple of occasions there were people waiting at 7, that by and large, having it open for the whole day, it's, it seems to be pretty spread out. While I was there, um, I had two cars come past me going out, and then as I was going out, two cars come past me, and there were, I think, two in there. So it was, it was pretty managed working. Yeah. Good. Um, how many more uh, years before chicken closes? Are they got enough land and they can go vertically for decades? Not decades. Uh, maybe a year. That's all? Just the one right next to the to uh, Mass Pike and Montana. with Montana across the street? Mm -hmm. yeah. If we had gotten the extension, we would have been the last man standing by, yeah. by some oh. number of years. So where are we going to haul next year? We would have really made money. Then. Oh yeah, we would have. We're going to be zero waste community. community. We're going to be what zero waste community. community. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We do. I mean, if we're open, we'll continue to haul and ship it. If they're not open, then we'll call it quits. Anything else? Um, I was saying this to Ned that we had a, we had a MEPA meeting uh, regarding our. Uh, Smith College Paris Pond dredging project that's coming up that included a design to do a bypass culvert um, so we would be able to do dry excavation without releasing any sediment. Uh, in 2008, I'm still going back to 2004, we designed a project that we executed in 2008 to dredge hydraulically so we wouldn't release any sediment. Uh, and that wasn't very successful. So for this go around, we, we thought we're really going to figure this out. How, how are we going to not release any sediment? So we did a study, and uh, for seven hundred or so thousand dollars, we thought we could put in this pipe. So we actually started designing it, and we made some contacts with regulators, and they thought it would be okay. And but that was a year ago. So here we are at this meeting, and um, before we got too far into the meeting, they they wondered why we couldn't release some sediment and they thought it would be really a good idea if we open the sluice gate in the spring and let some, you know, actually draw down the pond so we actually force some scouring to release a significant amount of sediment. So, anyway. I want the name. Time to change it. <laughs> we, we need him on our name. Yeah. So one guy was from fisheries and he said he would come out here and do a survey of the fish before and after. They want us to do this at least once a year for weeks at a time, which would be difficult for the college to do because of the static. It would be difficult because it flows. We can only release 200 CFS, and if we open the gate at 200 CFS and, and, and it's 300 CFS, the pond's not going to do anything except there'll be water coming out the bottom and going over the top. And then we'd have to be able to fill the pond back up when we were done. So we would need at least 50 CFS to refill because we have to release 27. So it's complicated, but it's Anyway, the, the thing is, um, Natural Heritage was there. They thought it was a great idea. There was a geologist from DEP. She thought it was a great idea. I wish I could remember the name of the executive, the executor or the <coughs> guy who ran the meeting from the NEPA or whatever that office was. He was in favor of it. They want it to be a study kind of thing. Um, so they talked about having UMass involved. Bob Newton would be involved if he's interested. And maybe other fisheries biologists. I just sat there going, okay. <laughs> so uh, I know that the permitting thing, the $70,000 in this contract for permitting, sediment management has always been huge, and maybe it's not so huge. It's a big deal. Yeah. And not only in terms of permits, but the cost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have to build facilities, you have to take the sediment out, you have to bring it somewhere. Well, let me tell you how far this went. They were wondering if we couldn't eliminate the need to dredge if we did this often enough. That's how far it went. Wow. Well, I will say that if you look at mm -hmm. regulators in other states, that release of sediment is commonly done. Yeah. Just on the most basic theory, I mean, you have sediment that's in a river. 
and somehow you're not supposed to release any of it, although it's there to begin with. It seems a little nonsensical, although there's concern about the environment and that sort of thing. But anyway, the release of sediment in dam removal projects in other states is something that's fairly common. So, I mean, that was kind of big news. Huh? I don't know if, how, how it will play out for this. Uh, for Robert Meadow, dam removal project. But it sounds like they're open to releasing sediment. Um, my big news is that uh, after four years at National Priorities Project, today was my last day. Wow. And the reason is I enjoy this work so much, I want to make a career out of it. So, this one. something that's related to municipal planning. Yeah, I haven't figured out exactly what it's going to look like yet. So I'm doing informational interviews now, um, and there are an awful lot of things, uh, organizations out there that do this kind of work. Um, it might require going back to school and getting a degree. Um, but uh, I've decided that after 25 years of doing federal budgeting, uh, sequestration no longer holds any charm. <laughs> and uh, I've really enjoyed doing the work here and at the Stormwater Commission, so I'm going to try and figure out how to make it a paying gig. Or I'll end up looking, looking burgers at McDonald's. <laughs> the pay is about the same. Yeah, <laughs> probably, probably. Which means I'll get paid twice what I'm making now. But if you're working for an uh, urban group, it's better than than being a urban planner. And when you've like untold amount of hours going to public meetings. And yeah. Well, I, I that's that's sort of a drag, but I, I apparently I do it pretty well. So, um, do you guys have any thoughts, leads? I'm like I said, I'm 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 doing some learning, but I've just decided. So this is my midlife crisis. I'm not getting a Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> in, uh, in early June, the PVPC is doing a day long workshop on green infrastructure. Cool. That sounds great. They're one of the people that I definitely want to reach out to. So I'll look into that. And the Army Corps is coming to talk about flood control. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Be all that you can be. Huh? <laughs> I've done enough work with the military and the Army Corps in particular uh, that I'm not <laughs> that's not where I'm going. Well that's great. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah I'm very excited yeah. about it. My wife was like this is the smartest thing you've ever done. So that's good. Wow. Yeah. Well, this, I, you know, I really like this work. I, I, you know, it's really wonky, but when, uh, when I started doing this for Claire uh, in the CIC, I was like, this is, this is, and that's the other part of it is when you deal with the federal budget, it's important work, but you never see an outcome. I can count, I can count on one hand in, in, the 10 years that I worked for the government, the number of times where I saw an outcome that was meaningful. This stuff, you know, I mean, for good or for bad, we're touching, we're touching the people of Northampton on a daily basis, and that, to me, is way more important. It's and for the good. I, well, sometimes it's not going to be for the good, but I mean, that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the thing about making tough decisions. You're not going to make, I mean, you know, we almost had a mini insurrection tonight over the extension, and we worked our way around it. But I can't, I'm not going to be able to vote for that thing. That's a driveway. So you know, we're we're going to make people unhappy, but it's about doing what's the, what's the right thing for as many people as you can, and keeping them engaged in the process, and and getting good outcomes. And uh, I like that idea. So that's that's that was my day. <laughs> Ned, you're staying. I'm planning on it. <laughs> that's my game plan. Anyway. Ned's got a boss car. I gotta tell you, if you haven't seen these things. <laughs> Men and cars. Hmm. They're fun. Um, just so everyone knows, I'm sure Mimi will be pleased to hear this. Uh, we've been approached by NCTV about mounting permanent cameras in this room, so they would film our board meetings going forward. Al, we're supposed to come up in the next few weeks and scope it out and see if it will work or not. Mm -hmm. Does Al follow the Cubs? Yeah, we won't have our baseball conversations. Come on. Oh. Look forward to our every two weeks. I get to you know check in with Jim. Yeah. Oh. So, <laughs> so maybe it's still coming. Will the camera turn red when it's <coughs> the staff will have to turn it on and off during meetings okay. as the meetings end, or we go to executive session. Mm -hmm. But um, I guess the city council wants a presence at as many public meetings as they can. Sure. That's great. Can you tell how many people? look at the video? Sometimes it depends on what's been discussed, you know, so there might be more views based on 
discussion. So I try to put as much of a summary as I can so people know. And like I, sometimes if it's something that's interesting, I'll put down the time it actually occurred, the conversation occurred, so they could fast forward to that point if they want to. But, you know. Do you get the impression it's a few hundred hits or a few dozen? Or? I, I'd go with probably a dozen. Uh -huh. You know, it's not everybody has access to the Internet. So having it on NCTV is definitely better because more people, you know, right. still watch things on television. But Ruth McGrath says the Stormwater is far and away their most popular, <coughs> yeah. most popular those, those program. Are all, those are all me going to the thing that chugs you the minutes. She's a traditionalist. No, well, sometimes when they transcribe, it doesn't exactly come out right. I am looking into something else. Like All set. Yeah. Jim? Man, I'm so inspired by Chris. I can't, I can't, wait. <laughs> I can't wait to come to work tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Do it all over again. Um, a, little, a little news on Pulaski Park. I guess I'll share that. I got a, I did receive a letter from Donnie Mayer, the... Yeah. Uh, well, Meyer, I guess his name is the chairman of the CPC, sent a nice letter saying, you know, these are the things that we're concerned about. Uh, I'm pledged to resubmit all the grant application and try to take into account some of the questions and issues that were in the letters. So um, it was nice to receive that. I'll send it on to the board. You can take a look at it. You see what's in there. Um, I also received a phone call from the mayor today about Pulaski Park. He wanted to talk to me a couple of things in that regard and um, sort of put his support behind. Um, trying to do improvements to the park, which was nice. I hadn't really heard too much from, from the mayor's office um, in the last application. Um, I think as the board may be aware, um, the mayor is looking at um, redevelopment plans for the roundhouse lot again. So I think there's some this sort of synergy of let's do some improvements to the park while the roundhouse lot thing is also being considered and moved forward. Um, you know, is a thing that uh, he thinks makes a lot of sense. So he was encouraging uh, me and the department to put together another grant application in August and uh, see where it goes. So I think that uh, sounds like a plan. Yeah. It's, it's a little bit of a pipe dream, but the uh, Center for the Arts has a big dream of maybe creating a building at the end of the park that was part parking, part Center for the Arts. Hard to imagine at this point. It's kind of cool when you think about it. With the Academy and the Center for the Arts, it'd be an awesome spot. Sure. And you're working on that new idea. Good. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah. All set. Yeah. Now I see they're marking up my uh, pavement holes in front of the post office? Mm -hmm. Does that mean something? Mm -hmm. It does. Okay. They should be grinding, grinding those down and making them smooth and the big question is, is whether or not they're going to replace them all because underneath the new trench permit policy if they cut squares like that so close to each other they have to take out an entire patch to do rather than segments. like they. So they refused to cut it out? Um, it wasn't part of the policy back when they took that out so they're looking to grind those bumps off and make it smooth. Who is this point? Who is they in this case? Is they the utility? Is, yes. Has, the has a city engineer gone down and stood there hand on hips? <laughs> a city engineer? Yes. With, with a lit cigar. He has not. Has the uh, director? A, a city, yes. That'd be good. He's an engineer. The director has driven over them and he knows what they feel like. And you know So I've been talking to base our Columbia Gas in Massachusetts. Uh, Rick Ross, and they are on his target to be done in the very, very near future. Um, I don't have anything other than that <laughs> question. So can we start around again? No, no, I think we could go for the uh, move, uh, dismissal, or what do you call that? Uh, uh, adjourn. 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 Adjour